Hey guys, Reno here. How you doing? So I have discovered something quite huge about Elementor. And that has to do with the default 1140 pixels grid that Elementor uses. If you use Elementor, you know that when you create a new section or a container, you always have a box where the main content stays in. So when you drag in an element, it stays within that box. And this box, which I've visualized over here, doesn't change when the browser or the screen gets bigger or gets smaller, but the sides do scale, as you can see right here. And this is actually a great thing, because if that box was scalable, for example like this, then the content would just be too wide on big screens. This is why most websites are designed like this, and probably why Elementor has this as default as well. Like I said, the width of this box is 1140 pixels, and this is not something that Elementor has came up with, but this is an industry standard. Back when I was in design school, this size was 960, and this was because the screens back then were smaller and had a lower resolution. But still to this day, many screens are 1366 in pixels. Not all screens are full HD. So 1140 in pixels works great on most screens because you have a little bit of room on the left and on the right. So I trusted this grid with my heart, you know, and every design that I created, I made sure that all of the main content stayed within that 1140 pixels. Only backgrounds and maybe some overlapping images would exceed that 1140 pixels. I explained this in many of my videos and even in my Adobe XD course, and I never received a questioning comment about it. And it worked in most cases, but I have to admit that I sometimes had some trouble with this grid. Uh, for example, when you wanted to create multiple columns, which is of course a very normal thing to do in web design. So one column works, it's 1140 pixels in, in width, of course. Two columns, how do you calculate that? First, you have to know the spacing between the boxes. Well, in many of my designs, I use 20 pixels. Uh, this is also a very popular size to use and it's also default in Elementor. So when you want to know how big your box should be, you can just calculate it really easily by doing 1140 minus 20 pixels of spacing between and then divide that by two. As you can see, 560. So then you know that your boxes should be 560. But then when you go to three columns, you have two gaps of 20. So then the calculation should be 1140 minus 20 minus another gap of 20 divided by three. And then this is the result. So here you have your first problem because these numbers are not very nice to work with. And in some development tools, it's not even possible to create these kind of pixel values. So what you then have to do is just make one box smaller and it's not ideal, but I just lived with this. And then Elementor announced that they were going to work with a new widget to create sections called the container. And with the container, you have to do quite some calculations because if you want to use the wrapping feature, you have to know how wide elements should be. Otherwise, you don't know when it's going to wrap to the next line. So then I dived into the 1140 grid. And now I understand how it works and it makes so much sense. And I have been doing it wrong for many, many years. So I'm making this video for anyone that still tries to align their contents to the edges of the 1140 grid because you think that that is the right thing to do. But I'm going to show you in this video that it isn't. And if you don't understand this, you're going to have a lot of trouble working with the new container widget when it comes out in Elementor. So let's just get started. So let's get started right away with the big shock, the big realization that I had. So the spacing between the boxes, which is 20 pixels as default, is not actually space between boxes, but it's 50% space on the left and 50% space on the right of each box. So every box has 10 pixels on the left and 10 pixels on the right instead of 20 pixels between the boxes. And this is important because then the most left box, no matter how big your box is, has 10 pixels on the left and your most right box has 10 pixels on the right. And your content, of course, always should be aligned to the columns and not to the space in between. So this means that if you want three columns like this, you actually have to calculate 10 pixels left and right on each box, making it 20 over here, 20 over here, and 20 over here. So you have to add an extra 20 pixels to the calculation, and then you will get another number. 
360. And this makes a lot of sense because this is a number that we can work with. So then I made a sheet in order to calculate everything. So this first line is what we just did. We align it to the 1140 grid. We have two boxes of 560 in pixels and there's 20 pixels of spacing between. So there's one gap of 20 pixels. As you can see, 560 works, no problem. But with three boxes or columns or containers, it becomes a problem already, as you can see over here. So when you extract that 10 pixels on the left and 10 pixels on the right, making it not 1140, but 1120, then the calculations actually make sense, as you can see right here. And this is also the example. So one box, the smallest box, if you want 12 columns, is 75 pixels. As you can see in my calculations as well. So I created a file for myself, which is this. Okay, <laughs> let me show. So with 1120, with two containers, the boxes become 550. And here you can see th those numbers. So those numbers are the exact same numbers as you can see over here. So now you know if you want a four column design that your boxes should be 265 pixels in width. And this is the same in Adobe XD, in Figma, but also then in, in your development tool like Elementor or Webflow. And I don't know how Webflow works instead of um, calculation, but right now with the container, it cannot calculate it automatically. So you have to use the custom width feature in order to give this icon box, in this example, a specific width of 360. So here you can see 360, it's exactly aligned to the 1140, actually 1120 grid. And if you want a four column layout like this, four columns, two, six, five, as you can see over here, advanced two, six, five. But my whole website is on 1120. So if you're working in Elementor or whatever development tool, you actually need to set up your website to 1120. Um, especially when you're working with the container, the new container in Elementor, uh, which is not out yet, by the way, that's why my big tutorial is not here yet. Or you can add 10 pixels of padding on each container uh, on the left and on the right. But that's, of course, a lot more work than just going, going to your site settings and then on their layout, just putting your main container on 1120. So that's what I did. And if you don't use Adobe XD, but you, but you want to use these numbers, then you can use this page. I will put this link in the description. I'm still developing this website, but I've also made a live page. So you can just actually bookmark this page and then use these numbers as well in your Adobe XD, your Figma, and uh, or in your development tool if you need to work with these numbers. Again, it depends on the technology you're using because in the current version of Elementor, we're still working with percentages for column width. So we can't actually use these values but with the container you can so what i've also prepared on this page is all of the sizes that you may want to use so uh, a 12 column layout and for the people that don't know uh, why is it 12 columns well that also has to do with math because 12 columns uh, 12 can be divided by two by three by four not by five uh, and by six so that's why I'm not setting up my grid like this anymore. Just one column on the left and on the right. But what I've done now is the artboard is still the same, it's 1400, but I've used 12 columns and then the, the gutter width, which is the element gap or the spacing between the columns is on 20. The column width is 75 because the smallest block is 75. And then to the sides is 140 instead of 130. So these are the actual numbers that you need if you're creating a new artboard in Adobe XD or Figma. Because if you turn on this grid, which you can easily turn off, of course, and you want to create three columns, you can easily just uh, grab your rectangle, be like, okay, uh, one, two, three. Perfect sizes, exactly the same in Elementor, and you're done. Or you want to create uh, four columns, you just make it one shorter, like this. One, two, three. Super easy to do, and you start designing from here. The only uh, one that isn't available in the 12 column grid is the five column layout. And that's why over here, I've also included the five uh, column layout. The one that's also missing is a seven, but because seven columns is not best practice. 
you shouldn't actually use that too often. And also 12 columns, the chances that you're actually going to use 12 columns is, is very small. I think the smallest one you should go in your design is, uh, is six columns. And this is also a bit embarrassing to admit, <laughs> to be honest. But um, this is probably the reason why Elementor in the old version with sections and columns, actually the current version, if you're watching this video in the first week, um, is using 10 pixels of spacing as standard in each column. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's just drag in an element like this. You can see that there's a little space over here and over here, which I always deleted in my tutorial. So I always went over here and just unlinked it because I was like, hey, I need to align it to the 1140 grid, right? But no, that's just not the case. You actually need that 10 pixels if you want to align it because then 10 pixels over here and 10 pixels over here creates 20. So the 10 pixels that they had was actually perfect. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Oh my God. I'm sorry for explaining it wrongly, but again, I've never seen anyone talk about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that, that I found this now and, and that I understand why my designs were never pixel perfect. Ha! Ah. And let's now talk about the gutter or the space between the boxes. Because right now we have used uh, 20 pixels, which is the most default. It's default in Elementor. Many people use 20 pixels between the boxes. But let's say that you have a website with a lot of content. So for example, a blog, and you wanna have a little bit more spacing. Can that still work? Uh, well, yes. Um, so if you go to my calculations sheet again, what I've also done is uh, created an option with 24 pixels of spacing. So this uh, for a blog, for example, can be a little bit too much if there's a lot of content on the website. So let's say that you want to have a little bit more spacing. So over here, 24 pixels of spacing. You can see the calculations over here. It creates different numbers. Because if you use 24 pixels of spacing, you need 12 pixels on the left and 12 pixels on the right of each column, making all of the columns a little bit smaller. And it's the same if you want to use 30 pixels. So over here, I've used 30 pixels, and this is still in the 1140 container, but on more luxurious designs, you want a little bit more space, right? So here I have used 30 pixels between all of the boxes. So then the smallest box becomes 65. And as you can see, these are all the numbers. I've also added that to the website. So uh, what you can do is go to this page and then click on grids and you can see other options over here. So 1140 with 30 pixels of gutter. And then here you can see those other values. You can also see the examples of how it looks compared to the other ones. So this will help you to make sure your designs are aligned. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's one more option and that is 1260 with 30 pixels of gutter. Because sometimes it happens that your client says like, hey, I want uh, uh, the, the main container of the website. Well, they don't call it a container, but th they want the website to, to be a little bit wider, right? So I've also added an option where the container is bigger. Uh, again, I've also done all of the calculations and it is with 30 pixels of spacing uh, because if you have more space, then um, I think you should have a little bit more uh, gutter. So a little bit more space between the boxes. And to be clear, you don't have to use these values, of course. If you think that the sidebar is way too big, you can adjust it and use another number, but then you have to uh, calculate the things yourself. But now you know how to calculate it and how it connects to your actual website. And I've put so much time in this because I wanted to have a nice system for myself and a nice system for you guys. So if, you, if you've learned something already in this video, please let me know, give me a like, because this video costs me a lot of time. All right, now let's talk about mobile responsiveness. So for mobile, the story is a little bit different. So the main content in the 1140 grid uh, doesn't go wider than 1120 in pixels. And that's good on desktop because you don't want the text uh, to be too wide because otherwise the reading experience will not be as nice. But on a mobile phone, you don't have that problem. And the last thing you want is to have the same width for the content on an iPhone 5 compared to an iPhone 13 Pro Max Plus whatever. <laughs> so on mobile, you want the content to scale. So here we can't use pixels. So that's why I've also done some calculations for percentages. 
So what I recommend is to use percentages on mobile. That's why I have uh, created a layout for a phone and a tablet as well with some default values. Here I've used 4% of spacing on mobile and 2% on tablet. Uh, why is that? Well, on 2% on a tablet, which is bigger, looks almost the same as 4% on mobile. Uh, this is a little bit hard to achieve right now within the current version of the container. Uh, I hope that they will change this uh, in Elementor. Uh, but right now, I just want to focus on the on the design. So for mobile, what I think you should do is just pick one of the uh, the default uh, artboard sizes that that Adobe XD offers or Figma. Uh, for example, one of these, and then, then just use the grid feature right here. And for mobile, I've used these values over here, but the pixel values don't really matter because in your development tool, you want it to scale. So a mobile pixel perfect design is almost impossible. If you have a better solution, then please let me know in the comments. But I think for mobile, this is the way to go. A mobile, you also don't want a lot of columns because if you go to my calculations and then go to uh, percentages, you can see that 4% already creates a problem when you want three columns, but three columns on mobile, when does that happen? Does it really happen that you have more than two columns on mobile, right? Because there needs to be content inside of it. So I think that two columns is the smallest one, but if you want to have three columns or four, then 4% uh, doesn't work. But what does work is 3.8, because then you get numbers that are workable. But again, you in your Adobe XD or Figma, you don't use percentage value. So you can just use the, the standard grid and just add four columns like this and then uh, use that to, to align it. And yes, you can calculate how big it is compared to the width of the phone, but that's just a little bit too much work in my opinion, because it's never pixel perfect on a mobile phone anyways. And on tablet, I don't think you will go any further than four columns because otherwise it becomes too small as well. And you're gonna use 2% of spacing. Another thing that you have to know is that you can see 90% for the main container over here and 85% for the main container over here because the container, you also want that to stretch, not just the inside. So when you're working with Elementor, what you can do now with the container, and this will be explained in my container tutorial in detail, but you can put the box, uh, for example, on 90%. So then when the phone scales, as you can see the content also scales. And that's, of course, what you want. And it's the same on tablet. So on tablet, I think that 85 is good and for mobile, 90. And one more thing before we go, I know that you can also work with percentages on a desktop if you want to. I've also done those calculations because I think that people will say like, hey, Reno, you're already working with percentages on mobile and on tablet in your development tool. Why not work with percentages um, on desktop as well. Well, I've tried to do it, but it's never the same as your design fail. This is the closest one I got to 20 pixels. I think that just the, the conversion from uh, pixels to percentages is kind of hard. That's why I recommend for desktop, since you're working with 1140 or 1120. Anyways, just work with pixels and then for tablet and mobile. Uh, use that scalability and use percentages. Again, how to apply that in the container will be in my container video. It's not out yet because Elementor is still changing the, uh, the container. What I actually hope they're gonna do is make it so that we don't actually have to uh, add in the values ourselves, but that Elementor can automatically calculate it. So what I actually want Elementor to do with the container is just uh, have an option where you can just say like, hey, I want two, con uh, two elements on a row and I want 2% of spacing in between so that it automatically um, adjusts that instead of having to manually have to add these numbers over here and also on desktop. And then this video will be less relevant for Elementor, but it will still be relevant for your design in Adobe XD or Figma. So I hope that you saw the value in this more in-depth video. It was very different from my other videos, but I think it's really important because I like pixel perfect designs and I know a lot of you guys do too. So let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. Maybe I'm missing something, let me know. And I'm super happy that this video is now out because uh, I spent so much time preparing this one. Thank you guys and see you later.